Ranger Command calling Team November. Uh, got something strange for you. Found a list of pre-war military radio frequencies here at HQ and started checking through them. All dead except one. Don't know if it's a hoax or a trap or what, but I thought you should hear it. Up to you if you want to respond. The signal originates near your current location. Anyway, I'll patch you through. SOS, SOS, Secret Service Officer Morningstar requesting aid. I'm trapped in a compromised location with hostiles closing in. I require immediate extraction. Just anyone read me. SOS, SOS, Secret Service Officer Morningstar requesting aid. I'm trapped in a compromised location with hostiles closing in. I require immediate extraction. Just anyone read me. SOS, SOS, Secret Service Officer Morningstar requesting aid. This frequency is for authorized United States military personnel only, which you would know if you were authorized United States military personnel. So, before I say anything else, I need to know what country you serve, Desert Rangers. sightings of a huge, hairy giant lurking in the woods. The locals say it's a mutant cannibal hobo called Melvin. I say it's Bigfoot. Stay tuned. squad, being heroes in Colorado Springs. I was? Well, you know where I was. And you can come see me any time. Until then, stay safe out there, sweetie. Can't wait to see you again.
Who the fuck are you? This is hardhead turf. The desert ri- Wait a minute. Are you the guys who made hamburger out of the Giffers? Oh, I didn't think anyone would take those assholes down. Ah, but so what? You're dealing with the hardheads now. So tell me, what the fuck are you doing in our territory? Ho ho ho, you mean our base? Well, the only way you get in there is if we stick a spit up your ass and cook you for dinner. And you know what? I think that's just what we're gonna do. Oh, go fuck yourself! Wait, you're you're serious? <clears throat> you know, I I have been feeling a little funny lately. Oh, damn it! I knew I was sick. Okay, assholes, fix me up, and you can do what you need to do. But we'll be watching you. Hey, the stink is gone. You're something special if you're here. But how did you get past fish lips?
yeah. If you thought it was a good idea to wander into hardhead turf, it wasn't. We're the motherfuckers who are gonna loot your steaming corpses in a minute! Hardhead! Kill these jerks! Taking the high ground! Oh, fuck them up! Thank you. 
have deceived to believe. Can you believe what we've got on the show tonight? I mean, can you? It's, I mean, look at it. Wow. It's just, I mean, it's incredible. Really. In all my time on this show, I haven't seen anything quite like it. It just kind of takes your breath away, doesn't it? Amazing. Really amazing. I tell you. We're going to go to our call-in line now and hear your reaction. Hello, caller. Is this thing amazing or what? <laughs> Star's physical specs look solid. What about sensors? The Dark Brief calls for magnoscopic visual input, passive IR, and military-grade audio pickups. The initial proposal called for a microphased radar array, but the energy output was an issue. The power plant couldn't handle it? 
The problem wasn't the reactor. The problem was the microwave emissions from the radar would cook everything within a 30-yard radius. <laughs> Holy shit! They're really going all in for the Gipper here, aren't they? <laughs> sure. If we can ever manage to get the thing to actually drive. Eh, minor detail. Everything else is right on target. Greetings, Rangers. I am Morningstar. Sadly, I will never know. Of course. I'm sure the ones topmost in your minds are, why was I made, and how did I become trapped here? Well, it was like this. Before the war, there were several attempts on the life of elder statesman Ronald Reagan. I was built to protect him from harm and allow him to take the fight to his enemies if necessary. Sadly, before I could be completed, the bombs fell and this facility was abandoned. Thus, though the sole reason for my existence has been dead for more than 150 years, I have sat here, alone, aware and conscious of my failure ever since. It has been unbearable. Sadly, I never had the honor. In a life of disappointment, not meeting America's greatest president is the deepest. Dangerous lunatics. I have monitored their radio traffic. They think they honor the elder statesman when deifying him goes against every precept of his deeply held Christian beliefs. They disgust me. Such as they are, I am a worthless piece of scrap. I am outfitted with what my creators called the Great Communicator, the most powerful weapon available at the time of my construction. But more important is my advanced cognition engine, which allows me to make nanosecond tactical judgments while in battle. I am apparently the most sophisticated combat AI ever created. That is sadly impossible. I was to be powered by a nuclear engine capable of generating 3,000 horsepower but the technological breakthroughs necessary to its function never materialized, and no lesser engine would be capable of moving my considerable weight. I am as pathetic as an elephant without muscles. I shall never move. It could, yes. My cognitive circuits were made to be removed for servicing and upgrades as needed or if an improved version of my body was ever completed. But there's no point to that now. I was built to protect Ronald Reagan, and Ronald Reagan is dead. There is no reason for the continued existence of my... self. Of course. Thank you. Killing me will be a delicate operation, and not without risk, but it shouldn't take you very long. And, if it will serve as an incentive to help me, you will be able to extract my primary weapon in the process. Payment, as it were. Work. For you? 
But I was built to protect Elder Statesman Reagan. I have no other purpose, and I failed in that purpose. Death is my only option. And if I were to die, perhaps God might permit me to at last see President Reagan, as I have longed to do all this time. It is kind of you to say so, but I have thought it through. I knew the body my creators were building for me would never work. I knew they were making design decisions that would delay my completion beyond the lifespan of an old man. But I did not speak up. Though they programmed me to protect Elder Statesman Reagan's life from any threat, and though his safety was my sole directive, my respect for chain of command, for the wisdom of my betters, made me keep mum. Had I said something, perhaps they would have considered a more feasible design, taken a quicker pace. No, I cannot forgive myself. I could have done more. It's a tempting offer, friends, to see the world at last, to fight as I was designed to. I want to do all these things, but... But... What I want is not important. I failed the man I was to serve. Therefore, I must die. Serve the spirit of Ronald Reagan as I would have served the man. That, friends, that is inspiring. Yes, I will do it. I will help you bring back America. You will need to remove my cognitive engine, but two things. One, the moment you start uncoupling it, my defensive cortex will begin an auto-destruct sequence, and to stop me from exploding and killing you all, you'll have to complete my removal before it reaches zero. Two, that means you will have to destroy my primary weapon, the Great Communicator, because you will not have enough time to remove it and my brain. I'm afraid so. The Great Communicator's delicate core systems would take too much time to extract intact, and they block access to my cognitive engine. You will have to destroy them to free me before the self-destruct countdown clock expires. It is a safety feature. Removal of my cognitive engine is interpreted as an attack, and any such attack will trigger a self-destruct sequence. You will have roughly one minute to finish the job before I explode, so do not hesitate once you begin, Rangers. Ugh. Is... is this pain? This... this is unbearable. Forgive me, Rangers. I... was unaware. The procedure would cause discomfort. But... You mustn't... stop. Evan, help me. Hurry, it... hurts. Oh. Thank you, Rangers. That is a great relief. Uh, I should remind you that in 25 seconds, I will self-destruct. Thank you. I am ready to...
traveled in my new home. Transfer complete. I am. I am. Hmm. Forgive me. My sensors make it clear this vehicle was not built by the finest engineers in the land. However, it is mobile, while my previous incarnation, despite the innovation of its design, was not. Please, Rangers, when you're ready, I am eager to be taken for a spin. November 1, this is Ranger HQ. Hey, um, listen up. I got a distress call from near your position. A man named Bulb says his mind's being attacked by, uh, Martians. Are you joking, November 1? If this was Arizona, I'd say you were suffering from a heat stroke. The distress call wasn't too clear on what these Martians are, but could be any manner of beast or monster. Advise checking it out. I think this bulb fellow will be happy to tell you more. <laughs> Over and out. amongst the Gippers, or maybe a friend or two in their ranks, I want to offer my sincerest condolences. According to sources, the Gippers, God rest their complicated souls, are all dead. Yep, it's a complete tragedy they in no way brought upon themselves, and we're sorry to see them go. And... at a disadvantage.
November, this is Ranger HQ. I have good news. There's some new gear here next time you stop by. It's a big improvement over the basic stuff we had before. But one last thing. The Patriarch commissioned a sculptor to make a statue of Vargas outside our HQ. He's nearly done, but he'd like to know who we want to dedicate this statue to. Good call, November. Making sure the Rangers know they'll be remembered if the worst comes to pass may boost camaraderie. I'll pass it along. Over and out. Let's take a look at the weather, free Coloradans. Looks like, yep, more snow. And now, some music. Sure am glad to see you folks. Yes, sir. <laughs> we got us a genuine crisis here. Martians! <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Martian robots, anyhow. Don't know what else they could be. Showed up right out of the blue like they stepped off a flying saucer. I reckon the Martians want my Tellarium, so they sent their war machines to jump my claim. <laughs> this here's my Tellarium mine, you see. Well, mine and Trudy's. Don't know what I'd do without the old girl. <laughs> Works harder than any man I ever saw, and ain't afeard of nothing. Why, I once saw her bite a grizzly bear right on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Folks around here call me Bulb, by the way. That's on account of the Tellarium. Makes you stink like garlic. <laughs> don't much bother me. Trudy don't seem to mind, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, oh, yeah. The Martians. Me and Trudy were working at the mine, and all of a sudden, these robots appeared. <laughs> One of them was as big as a house. I could tell right off they weren't no scavengers. They was something else. Yes, sir. <coughs> but wait till you hear the weird part. Now, <coughs> I bet you're <coughs> asking yourself how an old prospector like Bob would know the difference between a Martian death machine and some old scavenger robot. Am I right? We get scavengers poking around up here all the time. <clears throat> and Trudy can hear them rust buckets coming a mile off. Well, we leave out old parts or a few pounds of ore and they leave us be. But not the Martians. Oh, <clears throat> no sir. They turned up, the scavengers got madder in a pack of wet hornets. They came at the Martians from all directions. But me and Trudy caught in the middle. I told the old girl to hightail it out of there, but Trudy was fit to raise hell. And you can't tell her nothing when she's got her dander up. <laughs> I ran down here to call for help, and 
I've been waiting on you folks ever since. I ain't seen Trudy for a while now, and I'm getting worried. <laughs> Can you do something about these dang robots? <laughs> I reckon you do. <laughs> Ask away. <coughs> I'm always glad for a little conversation. Just ask Trudy. It's a wonder I ain't talked her ears off after all these years. Glad you asked. It's this mineral that's good for making electronics and such. Most of what we scrape out of the mine we send to the Patriarch. Most folks won't handle it because it's toxic. But I ain't never had no problems with it. <laughs> this used to be a gold mine, you know, way back before the bombs fell. <laughs> when the mine got played out, the owners turned it into some kind of tourist trap. I came up here hoping there might still be a little gold left, but found the Tellarium instead. It ain't an easy life. <laughs> it keeps me and Trudy fed. Don't know what I'd do without the old girl, let me tell you. <laughs> Fair enough. You change your mind. You know where to find me. <clears throat> I knew you was good folks the minute I laid eyes on you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mine's just over that hill yonder. You find Trudy and chase them dang robots off my claim. <clears throat> One more thing. If you find Trudy, she could well. You know. <clears throat> I'd appreciate it if you'd bring her necklace back. There's some codes written on it that I need to run the mine. If you kept them safe for me. I'll be waiting here when you're done. <clears throat> Good luck up there. <laughs>
Unit 3. No stack. No stack. Can't help. I win. Get something? Thanks for bringing back her necklace. Can't run the machinery in the mine without them codes. <laughs> Damn them robots! Each and every one! I sure hope you gave them hell for old Trudy! You, uh... <coughs> you did get them all, didn't you? No pile of scrap metal gonna stop old Bulb, no sir. I got just the thing to clear that mess out. <laughs> Have that mind going again in no time. You wait and see. Sure is a relief not to have them dang robots taking my ore. Been a thorn in my side for a long time. I'm grateful for your help. <laughs> Fine folk. Yes, sir. Real salt of the earth. <coughs> Helping a poor old man around and asking nothing in return. Maybe there's some hope for this wasted world after all. Y'all come back anytime. Here. <coughs> Glad to see. November. This is HQ. We finally got a signal through to Arizona. It's a bit spotty, but we got word from General Wade Woodson. He'd like to speak with you. Thanks, November. Amazing what you can do with a bit of tape and a lot of ingenuity. See you soon. Over and out.
just cleaned my gun.
Come in, Team November. We have a situation here with a group of women. Their families were arrested and the local authorities aren't telling them what's going on. Think you can help? Your mostly unpaid, typically thankless job. Yes, that's the enthusiasm these gals are going to need. There's an opportunity here to show the women of Colorado that if local law enforcement isn't treating them fairly, the Rangers can set it right. HQ, over and out.